for his opening remarks. Mon général, the floor is yours. Excellencies, dear ambassadors, General Portolano, Italian Secretary General of Defense and National Armament Director, dear Luciano, uh, Mr. Camille Grand, Assistant Secretary General for Defense Investment, mon cher Camille, leaders and representatives from industry, Admiral Generals, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests from uh, around the globe. Good morning and welcome to Roma and uh, to Italy, our host nation, for this year's NATO Industry Forum called so-called NIF. Uh, uh, it's my real honor and a great privilege for me to gather with my co-host Camille Grand um, to welcome you to this live event. Thank you all for coming since your participation and contributions are what made this event possible. And thank you, above all, to the NATO teams and our host, the uh, Italian authorities, for organizing this year's forum in this wonderful place. For this year's NIF, literally, all roads lead to Rome. As this event is a great final um, for what we had been doing since the last NIF in Washington, D.C. in 2019. And I'm uh, particularly glad to have with us today so many distinguished representatives from the production sector, both from what we call traditional and the non-traditional defense industry. For that matter, I'm convinced that the borders between these two will increasingly fade as we seek to address the requirements of our defense capability development. This is uh, the result of changes in our security environment that continue to evolve at a tremendous pace, requiring us in turn, both nation and NATO, to continuously adapt in order to preserve our relevance. When I was a kid, not so, uh, so long, watching the, and reading science fiction, including popular movies, series, and books, you may also be familiar with, I was fascinated by the devices used to fight, to communicate, uh, transport, which were available to the characters in those stories. Lasers, holograms, instant communication, wide availability of data and information, space, incredible speed, or artificial intelligence, everything looks so fantastic. Think just of HEL 9000, a supercomputer with uh, artificial intelligence capabilities from Stanley Kubrick, 2001, A Space Odyssey. With all its intellectual power, social skills, and legal and ethical issues associated with it. And today, we are living with many of these fantasies. They are part of your everyday life, However, along with benefits that progress has brought us, we are also faced with a great many challenges because this widely available technology can and often it's used against us and our way of life. We observe today that the traditional lines between systemic competition, crisis and war are increasingly blurred as are the former differences between forward and rear, between virtual and physical. Our environment is characterized by persistent competition with competitors determined to shape their environment, challenge the liberal world order, and who are investigating heavily in their military capabilities while also seeking to circumvent the deterrence we have built on our military power by remaining below the threshold of conflicts to, to look beyond NATO's Article 5. This is type fight, for instance, 
by the form unrestricted warfare, the concept which two senior Chinese colonels develop in their 1989 book. This asymmetry causes conflict to expand into new domains where physical borders are irrelevant, like cyber, space, or the connective domain, where a number of new and or existing players can challenge our military instrument of power and our societies, often anonymously, especially since attribution may prove challenging or even impossible. This is certainly challenging for the military since we need to understand the broader context in which our military instruments of power will be developed and create the frameworks to proactively shape the environment in which these instruments will be used. To illustrate our challenge, think of the fragment of verse written by the 7th century before Christ Greek poet called Archico Archilochus, which reads, the fox knows many things, but the hedgehog knows one big thing. Obviously, we, military, are the hedgehog. However, while the one big thing, we need to know how to provide efficient deterrence and defense, we also need to know the many things that may offer challenges, but also opportunities that relate to a central, all-embracing system of security and defense. And this is why, facing this extension of conflictuality, we expand our engagement in other operational domains, even when they are not weaponized in the classical sense of that word. And this is where we need you, our industry partners. I consider our defense industrial base an, as an integral part of our military instrument of power, particularly from, for the development of our defense capabilities. Industry is therefore a union part of the Alliance deterrence and defense posture. And this is the reason why we need to maintain a quality dialogue with our industrial ecosystem about the production of our defense capabilities. For us, in NATO, it is vital. We understand the prospect of new technologies and in particular, their potential to become disruptive regarding security. And in so doing, it is vital that we encompass both dimension of this technology, technology as a challenge, potential threat, and technology as an opportunity. However, the fact is that the defense sectors no longer have as the exclusive control over the development and availability of defense technology. Since so much innovation and technology progress is now driven by the market. And for most of these developments, we are no more than consumers. But our intent is to use the security relevant technologies, implement them in our capability development, ensure they are interoperable, and make sure that they are used in the most effective way possible. That will require we outthink our adversar adversaries and avoid strategic surprise, which is why the transformation of our capabilities and the way we can do war must be a permanent process as it is the essence of the adaptation. And it, it implies a permanent dialogue between the actors of that transformation, war fighters and producers. ACT, by representing the capability needs of war fighters, is paving the way for allied command operation to be successful today and tomorrow by integrating nations' effort in warfare development. That way, we support ACO by building the capability blocks and dealing with the legacy system by integrating them into the Alliance new capabilities whenever possible. Being a part of NATO, NATO's big will responsible for defense and planning and facilitation of Alliance capability development, ICT is also responsible for identify, identifying military requirements. 
and we are therefore the catalyst for adopt, adapting NATO's military instrument of power. In cooperation with industry, we want to make sure we, NATO, are able to move from a platform-centric development to a system-centric approach and to solve together with industry what needs to be done more agile collectively to ensure quicker delivery. AC2, ACT and NATO as a whole needs industry to help it maintain this new defense and security ecosystem. ACT and other NATO stakeholders responsible for capability development are therefore a part of one shared community with industry. We need you and you need us. We face an uncertain future, but we face it together. My message to my NATO's colleague is therefore, let's be bold enough to embrace innovation, smart enough to grow our agility, and open enough to learn from allies industry. We can win only by working together as a team, and I'm excited about that shared future. Ladies and gentlemen, I count very much on uh, your our exchanges today and tomorrow, and I'm sure that they will be fruitful. ACT is open to cooperating with you to facilitate the future work you and the NATO member can carry out. And uh, just to remind you, ACT is a NATO stakeholder with the largest established network of partners, including industry, academia, COEs and scientific innovation community. I strongly believe that this forum allows us to reinforce the bounds, bounds that go beyond a simple business partnership that strengthen our instruments of power and doing so contribute to our security. I wish you all promising and fruitful exchanges during this event. I expect fresh and new ideas and I'm sure that this event will lead to concrete outcomes. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. I can ask you to be uh, patient until we sort out uh, the uh, arrival of the next speaker. Sorry for the delay. Oh, please. Sorry, sorry for that. Okay, thank you. Sorry for this misunderstanding. But uh, good afternoon uh, to all the participants. Uh, of this edition of the NATO Industry Forum, which Italy is uh, really honored uh, to host. Being the first uh, Italian representative uh, to speak in this venue, I would like to immediately thank uh, the highest authorities of the Alliance uh, that so strongly wanted this event uh, to take place, from uh, the NATO Secretary General, who will join us uh, uh, tonight for the host nation dinner, and to the two co-organizers, uh, General uh, Philippe Lavigne, SACTI, thank you, thanks uh, Philippe, merci, and the Assistant Secretary General for Defense Investment, uh, uh, Mr. Camille Grand. Camille, merci beaucoup. But also let me extend uh, Italy's uh, and my personal welcome to all the distinguished guests who are already present here or uh, who are going to join us uh, later on. From the NATO Deputy Secretary General, to the permanent representatives of the North Atlantic Council, uh, from the members of the military committee, led by the chairman, Admiral Robert Bauer, to the other assistants uh, of the Secretary General, and to all of you, institutional representatives and uh, members of the industrial world who have granted your presence here today. Then, 
said so, uh, excellencies uh, and uh, dear guests, please allow me to begin uh, with uh, my introductory remarks uh, with a short story. A short story that goes back to 1942 when Albert Einstein was teaching in uh, Princeton at the Institute, uh, Institute for Advanced Study. One day, while he was walking through the campus, uh, after examining uh, students who were attending the final year of, the, of uh, his uh, physics uh, course, his assistant approached him and asked, Professor, Professor Einstein, but the exam paper you have, given, you have just given uh, the students, is it not the same that you gave them last year? Pleased by the question, Einstein replied, yes, it's exactly the same. At this point, baffled uh, by his answer, the assistant asked again, but Professor Einstein, how could you give the same task to the same students for two consecutive years? And Einstein replied, well, the questions are the same, the students are the same, but they are, the answers cannot be the same, they have changed. So what I want to share with you in, uh, with this uh, short story is the fact that uh, if uh, in 1942 uh, the answers to physics questions changed from here to, the, to here, today in light of the current scenarios characterized by innovation, digitalization and uh, technological competitiveness, uh, the answers change even faster. In a rapidly transforming international context, in uh, which technology and geopolitics uh, are realities strongly connected uh, to each other, the Alliance's capability to create innovation also in the defense field is uh, with no doubt synonymous of a strategic advantage. In uh, 2019, the Alliance clearly identified the emergency and disruptive technologies on which to concentrate its uh, joint efforts according to a common roadmap. I'm not here to list them, but uh, I would like to focus uh, your attention on a perspective that uh, joins uh, progress in apparently divergent sectors, such as uh, autonomy and artificial intelligence compared to biotechnologies and uh, human enhancement. That is to say, the centrality of the commander, the soldier, the sailor, the aviator and marine, both in the decision-making process and uh, in the operational or tactical activities. An approach that blends uh, in the serviceman or servicewoman holder of the ethical values, the progress of science and technology. Techni technological innovation is uh, an extraordinary multiplier for economic and social development, but it is also a goal to reach dominance. Moreover, nowadays, uh, there is a higher awareness of the neutral nature of technology itself. In fact, over the years, there has been a radical change of the technological transfer process flow to a bi-directional logic from military to civil and uh, vice versa, which has favored constant and mutual technological uh, enrichment. And regarding the technological plan, much of the technologies are dual use because they can be employed both in the civilian and the military field, as well as in the wider and broader security areas. Dual use technologies thus contribute to develop and produce innovation, satisfying a range of demands that today require adoption of adequate supporting policies. Furthermore, there is also the need for different approach or different strategies, or better yet, change of mentality. To this end, in my opinion, in the, the military world should be inspired by the open innovation model, promoting collaborations with uh, organizations and stakeholders outside the military environment. In this framework, the two initiatives of the Defense Innovation Accelerator for North Atlantic and the NATO Innovation Fund presently undergoing the negotiation phase are following this approach. In this sense, they should aim at optimizing the integration of allied centers of excellence, assuring a wide spectrum of cooperation among strategic commands, allied nations and forces, and industries, all 
all of them supporting elements and pillars of a country system. Then thinking about the future is an exercise of uh, absolute value. Anticipation is an innovative version of strategic thinking arising from the need to adapt uh, in order to face uh, change constantly growing in speed and complexity. And uh, I beg your pardon, but uh, since uh, I come uh, from uh, an experience in the operational area, in the operational field, from uh, some uh, theaters uh, of operations, let me share uh, with you this concept. Reacting to a crisis when it is already underway strongly limits the, possi uh, the possibility of action. Therefore, an advanced forecasting approach allows to identify and address risks before they become unmanageable, formulating more flexible, more conscious, and uh, adaptive decision-making strategies, eventually building sort stronger systems. The expected final results are strategic autonomy and the technological age that are in close connection with the growth of the industrial sector, the small and medium enterprises, and the academic research and development world. Today, we share the need to set up new corporations with the objective of rationalizing resources and creating the necessary synergies among allies and the supranational bodies, as, for example, synergies with the European Union within the NATO-EU joint declaration. And uh, just to conclude, let me say that taking into account that victorious strategies have already triumphed before giving battle, while losers have already given battle before seeking victory, and also taking into account, uh, into consideration that plans are only good intentions if uh, we do not transform them into effective work or products, the opportunity offered by the NATO Industry Forum this year, these two days, constitute a chance to contribute to the development of the new strategic concept of the Alliance, where innovation and technology are driving elements for its continuity. Elements to be achieved as much as possible in a relationship of complementarity with the European Union in order to avoid any overlapping or any duplication. I thank you very much for your attention. I, I wish you all a uh, very good and productive work uh, and I uh, hope not break, breaking the uh, protocol if uh, I announce uh, the first plenary section, session uh, sorry, chaired by Lieutenant General Tom Sharpie. Thank you very much uh, and welcome to Rome. <laughs>